Hi there, and welcome to another video tutorial from Cornflower Iris. Today I'll be showing you my response to the colour throwdown challenge 445 this week. The four colours are navy, light pink, gold and white, which are shown with this lovely inspirational image. I'll leave a link in the video description over to the colour throwdown blog, please have a look. So here I'm going to work with a white card base, this is 300 GSM super smooth card that I'm cutting in half and then scoring at 4 and 8 inches to make a UK A6 card base. I didn't really have any cardstock in nice colours so I'm using two shades of Crafter's Choice paint in English Rose and Prussian Blue and I'm cutting two mats out of the same cardstock, each half inch smaller than the last. I'm going to do some foiling so I was looking at some different double sided tapes and I couldn't make my mind up, and you'll see me change my mind many times through the video. So I'm painting the smallest mat with Prussian blue paint, and here it looks quite a bright blue. I'm using a wash brush, and then speed drying that after cleaning up a little, um, with a heat gun. I applied two coats of paint to make it a really nice, deep navy colour. Using acrylic paint to give a style of cardstock is different to using an alcohol marker. You can see it's a little bit shiny with this particular paint and it gives a little bit of texture too which is kind of nice and sort of part of the look I was going for with this card. So I started off, I decided to use the larger double sided tape and then apply some gold foil on top. For a full list of supplies please see the video description and there'll be a very extensive list of links over on my blog but I'm just using the stickiness of foil on double sided tape, smoothing it out with a bone folder and then lifting it up to show a really nice shiny gold effect. I then repeated this pattern down the paper and then for a matte in the background I'm using this beautiful dusky pink English rose colour of paint and just painting it around the outside edges. I then decided I didn't like the stripes that I'd done with the gold foil and decided to cut another mat the same, do two cuts of paint again and use the thinner double sided tape. And just with the scrap pieces of foil I was able to completely finish this card. Using a wider spacing really gave a more modern and clean looking feel. You can see the two side by side. So now I decided to use some dies. I had this idea for using a heart on the card and to send it to a friend that I don't get to see that often. So I had a sentiment hello friend from a stamp set and then found a book plate tag that would nicely cover that. Along with a couple of stitched hearts and the sentiment would love for the inside. Then inspired by the inspirational photo with the anchor pillow on there. I'm using an embossing folder with some anchors on it. So to make sure everything matches, I'm using that lovely English rose paint again and just painting some areas of white 300 GSM cardstock and then sticking on the dies. So I'm using an A4 format die cutting machine so I can cut multiple dies at once. So just to make sure there's no problems going through, I'm sticking them all down with masking tape. The good thing about using 300 GSM card is that it can really take this amount of paint as well. You don't really want to do this technique on something like 160 GSM card. So I'm using the Xcut Express and just going through. Once is definitely fine for this kind of die, but just going back for convenience. I decided to cut a couple of extra of the smaller hearts to use as embellishments. They're always handy to have and you can always find a way to use them. Then I'm turning the dial for embossing and embossing that background with anchors. It's kind of difficult to see though on camera. So at this point I still hadn't completely decided how I was going to put the card together. So I started 
putting things together, seeing what looks nicest. I'm using a homemade stamp positioning tool that I made because it's a little bit larger than those available on the market. And then using the stamp and some paper mania dye based ink in a very dark kind of navy colour. I'm stamping it multiple times to get a really nice impression. I didn't really want to add embossing powder and make even more shine on this card. I wanted to keep it kind of rustic in the background. The English rose paint isn't as shiny as the navy blue paint, so it adds a nice contrast. To make sure we can see those anchors on the background, I'm using a sanding block. This isn't a craft sanding block, it's just from a DIY store. And sanding off the paint on top of the embossed detail on the background. It really makes the anchors pop and gives a lovely laid back kind of shabby feel to the card. I then found this braided rope in a lovely dusky pink in the works and decided it would go beautifully with this colour challenge. So it also goes really nice with the kind of laid back look I'm going for with this card. I cut it to a reasonable length and then decided I wanted it round everything, both the navy blue and pink cardstock. So I'm just using some tape adhesive to stick the navy blue cardstock down and then I'm going to wrap it round the back and stick it down with some scotch tape. This means there's no sticky glue making the fabric of the rope go a bit strange and nobody can see how we put it together. But it does mean this card is going to be very dimensional. So I found some baker's twine in a pale pink and white. I didn't want to add too much to the card at this point, it's got quite a lot going on. So I'm just using the one strand to attach the tag at the top. And then using frown pads to adhere the panel to the card base. And then I decided the heart looked really plain and didn't have much detail on it. So instead of adding glitter, which would really compete with the rest of the shine, I just used a white gel pen to put some dots around the edge. And you'll see better in a close-up at the end what this does for the card. And then frown pads to adhere it over the top of the braided rope. And then for the inside, I'm using a Nouveau glue pen just to apply some adhesive to the back of the Whittle of die cut and placing the hearts inside just to add a bit of interest. So I like to make a matching envelope for my cards and I found this trendy blue lifestyle 12 by 12 pad in the works. It's mostly navy blue and this one I'm using has lots of tiny hearts on it and is in navy blue and white which matches the colour scheme. I'm using the 123 punch bar by We Are Memory Keepers. The paper is cut to 8 and 3 eighths of an inch and is punched at 3 and a half inches. These pan papers are really detailed and really busy, so they don't need much extra embellishing. But I thought I'd add a bit of fabric in the form of lace. I couldn't decide if between lace and baker's twine. The lace matches less the card style, but it goes really nice with the envelope and adds a bit of interest. So I did this using a tape runner, and then realised that this card is so dimensional it doesn't really fit inside a normal envelope, so I needed to convert it to a box envelope. To do this, using the 123 punch board is a little bit easier than using the envelope punch board because there's already two score lines, so all I had to do was line up the, the score line already on the left and just add a second score line on the right. This cardstock is 250 GSM, so it really holds its shape well when you make a box out of it. The tape adhesive wasn't really making it though. I did manage to put it together. It's easier if you put something inside the envelope, or something you can press onto. But I later changed this for red liner tape, which just kept everything together a bit better. For the outside of the envelope, I thought there's one heart left, let's use it. And 
I cut a panel, a stitch rectangle panel, out of some 220 TSM cardstock that I got from Poundland. To make sure all four elements are on the envelope as well as the card, I wrote the name of the recipient in a gold gel pen and then just adhered it to the card front using some tape runner. I'll leave you with some stills at the end of this video, showing you close-ups of the outside and inside, how they shine in the light, and finally with um, an image from the Colour Throwdown blog. Please do check out the challenge and have a go yourselves, it's really fun to just challenge yourself to work with four colours. So thank you very very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it and got a little bit inspired. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button below the video and subscribe to my channel for future tutorials. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next time.